So hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the Technical Market Breakdowns. So to be precise, this is the 34th episode of the Forex Market Breakdowns. Today we'll cover some interesting pairs. I'll do at least three pairs. Caleb will choose the pairs that we'll be doing. And I'll break down the markets. I'll show you which pairs I expect. I'll review some of the setups that I did last week. And hopefully you'll learn a thing or two. Besides the technical analysis that we'll be doing, fundamentals, what has been going on in the markets, one, we know Germany is almost going into a recession and you can see the euro is sliding down lower compared to the dollar. We'll show you what is happening on the technical charts, but that is what is happening from the fundamental space. Number two, the thing that has been affecting the markets for a very long time, coronavirus. We are now hitting 900 people. The last time we had a virus was in 2003, like I said earlier. That time it was the SARS virus, killed over 800 people knocked off some commodities, especially oil and copper. The same is happening now. We've seen oil lose almost 10% in the first month of 2020. So we are currently trading at the $50 mark. And OPEC is trying to organize a meeting. We're not sure if it will go through. And so we're waiting. We're waiting on what will happen. Technicals are printing what will possibly happen in the charts. I won't look at oil because I don't see anything concrete, anything solid. And I don't, I don't just analyze pairs. I do the pairs which have a reason. So that's what we'll talk about in the markets. That's what is happening in the fundamental space. And hopefully you'll learn something from the technicals. But for now, I'll jump straight in and start doing the technical breakdown. So I'll start off my analysis by looking at gold. So I'll start off from the weekly chart. I want to go to the monthly chart. And gold has been moving higher for the better part of 2019. I think for the last six months of 2019, all the way to now 2020, gold has been on a bullish trend so basically what's happening is we are forming new highs and new lows as you move higher so new higher highs and higher lows so in the weekly chart i have this one two three four five pattern which is an elliot pattern so we had this one we had a two a bounce then we had a break above this channel we had a correction which was capped well by this top of the channel and we had an extended move the move higher should should for it for the move to be complete should at least complete the 27.2 Fibonacci pattern so I really rely on Fibonacci for me to know when the pattern is over and you can see we didn't, we didn't even get a spike to this 27.2 level and most probably what happens is we get a spike for the 27.2 if this is an Elliott pattern I believe wave 3 could be the extended move and wave 5 could just be a normal a normal a normal bullish leg not an extended one and so a move to touch 1650 will really be valuable and will really confirm the end of this pattern and now maybe probably a reversal anyway we have not gotten that yet so i have that at the back of my mind what is happening if you zoom in to look at what has been happening for the last two or three weeks basically a month is gold has consolidated between 1580 1590 1600 and the 1550 dollar mark so as long as we are trading above 1550 for me as long as we are trading above 1550 then i'll hold on to this long bias i'll hold on to the bullish bias and expect a move higher to the cap to touch r2 and probably to spike 1650. for the move to take place i think we'd need to get a big risk in the market and the coronavirus will probably act as a catalyst but it seems the market has been an ignoring that because you can look at stocks and stocks have not been moving lower so that's what i have on the weekly chart so unless we get a close below r1 on the weekly chart which is 1558 and the 1550 which is a crucial level for me i use a very good system in marking of my levels and you can look at history and look at how markets reacted to my levels and i think my levels are quite accurate so like this correction was capped by 1450 and we had an extended move so as long as we are trading above 1550 from a weekly viewpoint I'm still bullish on this pair. If I go down lower to the daily time frame to look closely at what's what's going on on the daily time frame, you get a different perspective. And now this is where you need to combine two or three things and make a decision based on what is happening. So on the weekly, on the daily time frame, this is what has, for the last 20 days, this was a spike in the early days of January when we still had the U.S. Iranian tensions and we had a spike to 1600 and a slight correction all the way to 1550. Again, 1550 acted as a good level, but you can see we had an extended move that was capped by 1590. So if I used my Fibonacci pattern, you get that this was a correction again to touch the 78.6 level. So if I plot from the 1611 mark, which was the highest point reached, 
and the 1535 mark which was the lowest point reached on this correction then you get that we came close to 78.6 and we started a drop lower so the drop lower sends us all the way lower to the 15 15 dollar mark and this will also be a very good conference for a bullish move higher correcting this initial move get a correction to 15 15 then the bullish move continues on the weekly chart but for us to get this for us to keep on riding this wave lower you can also come back and plot a fibonacci from this point you, can, you get the first drop we had which was supported by the 1550 mark and 61.8 p 1575 and it looks like we're moving lower so on the daily time frame from what is happening on the daily time frame i wouldn't want to be in a bullish position unless you get a close above 1575 so as long as you're trading below 1575 and below the p mark for the monthly i'll be short and i'll be short all the way down to 1515 so as i move lower my bias is changing so now i'm short at least from p to 1515 but i still have the long setup if we get a break above 1575 then i shift and go back to my long bullish setup and i look for the r1 first 1610 i look for 1625 as the second target i'll keep you updated as the markets are moving if i go down to the four hour chart before i clear my, my i show you the possible entry points and exit points so yeah this is the four hour chart and 1575 so you can see clearly we had a break of this trend line and it was a good break followed by some good momentum some good bearish momentum some strong candles suggesting that probably gold could be turning and moving lower so we had a correction again from 1550 which acted as a good support level and we had a move lower again capped by 1575 so what do i think if we are trading above 1575 i don't want to see a break above 1590 on the four hour chart for me to go long but as long as we are trading below 1590 i'll hold on to my short bias first target 1550 breaking past 1550 might be quite a task but if we get this break then the momentum behind the move might send us lower all the way to 1525 and ultimately 1515 so that's my outlook on gold i've given you a clear perspective on what i expect i've shown you the possible moves that i expect the probabilities on the moves and i've shown you what i do if i'm handling gold so for now i'm short at least we've gotten a close below p and i think this is likely to continue at least for the short term up to 1550 which is about 200 points from 1570 then you can look for 1535 which adds up to another 150 points and finally 1525 which would make about 500 points if you're trading on gold stop losses i'd bring my stop losses above 1590 i want to be secure at least with my moves above 1590 so that's my outlook on gold and now i'll go to the next pair that i'll be looking at so the next pair that i look at is not actually a pair this is the dollar index so you can do some research and understand what the dollar index is but basically it's the dollar being weighted against a basket of other currencies, mainly the G10 pairs. So the euro, the pound and other pairs weighted against the dollar. So we try and understand at what price the dollar is trading. So this is, most people don't actually trade this, but it helps in understanding where other markets are moving and why they are moving that direction. So I'll start off from the weekly chart. And on the weekly chart, the dollar has been on a rise for a very long time. All the way back from 2018, we've seen a higher dollar. So from when Trump was elected, I think two years later, we saw the dollar bottom. And because of his policies, we can see the American economy is doing well and the markets have been rising. So the last time we had a drop, we had a drop all the way from 99.5, which was towards the end of 2020, 2019, I mean. And in the beginning of 2019, we were capped by the 97.96.5 dollar mark. And from that point onwards, we got bullish momentum. So we basically have three trend line bounces with some strong consolidation. You can see this. It looks like the end of this trend. It looks like we'll be reversing soon. And that's what I'm looking for long term. I think much of the money is to be made in the reversal, not in this move higher. But if you look at the patterns which are forming here, so we had this first bounce, which was capped by the 98.2, had a correction to 96, and we had an extended move all the way to 99.2. We then got the second pattern repeating and now we had a bounce the third bounce of the trend line and now it looks like we'll be capping the 100 mark the 100.5 dollar mark which is a high price the dollar has not been trading at the 100 dollar mark now for quite some long time the last time we had it trading at the 100 dollar mark was in 2017 so three years ago and it looks like history will be repeating itself so the dollar will be visiting 100 100.5 
forming new highs. So that's my outlook on the dollar index. I think this is a one-way bet. There's no way that the dollar could be going lower. Based on what is happening on price action, I think a big change in fundamentals will be needed for us to change. But this is a one-way bet, and like gold, where I had many possibilities, for this one I only have one probabilities, and it is one probability, and it is higher. I expect the dollar to keep on rising. Probably we'll get a correction after being capped by R3, 99.2, a slight correction, probably to 98.5. And the momentum keeps on moving higher and probably 100 100.5 so i'll try and look for short sales probably at 3 to 98.5 then look for the bullish move to 100 and from there i'll keep i'll give you an update on what will be happening on the site so that's my outlook on the dollar index not much a one-way bet and you can make your money by betting on that direction which i think will affect other pairs and you can do your research and look at how other pairs are affected so that's my outlook and i'll do my last pair euro yen so the last pair that I'll be looking at is Euro Yen, still I'll start off from the weekly chart and for a long time, for a long time, all the way from 2018 January, the Euro has been sliding lower. Much of the move could be predicated on the low interest rate environment in the European economy. So the interest rates are currently negative, this means that if you deposit money with the European banks, you will pay for you to keep your money in the bank. So that has been having a big effect. And the performance on the euro and on the performance in the European economy not really doing well. So if you come down lower to what is happening on the moment, you get that the euro has been moving lower. So euro yen from the weekly chart, you can see we had the third bounce on this downward trend line. And we've gotten some very good pattern here suggesting that we could be getting a move lower, sending us lower, breaking past S1 and moving all the way to S2. But I won't be in a hurry to conclude that. I won't be in a rush to conclude that. Instead, I'll focus on what is happening on the moment. So from the big picture perspective, it looks like the euro is going lower. And I'll be looking for first target one, S1 on 17.3, which is 2,000 pips from where we're trading, and 114.3, which is about 4,000 pips. That's an ambitious target, and a lot can change before we get to S2. But if the move goes all the way to S2, then I'll keep on riding it, and I'll keep on looking for how I can execute trades. For this to be nullified, I'd want a break above 121.8, $122 mark. So for this bearish trend, like I'm saying, to be nullified, I don't a break above 122, which I don't see coming because clearly there's some bearish momentum following Euro Yen and taking the moves lower. So on the daily chart, this is what you have. We had the first bounce, we had the second bounce, and then we had this third bounce, suggesting that we are getting a reversal, but it was capped by the third bounce on the weekly chart like I've shown you, you can see clearly bearish momentum is taking over. We then had a retest of this trend line and still markets are moving lower. So I expect a break past 118.3, a touch of S2 and probably a move lower all the way to S3 which is 117.8. So first I'll be looking for 118, 119, then I'll look for 117.8 and then 117.3. But first I'd look for 117.8 after a break of 119.8, 119.3. 118.8, 118.3, and then I look for 117.8, which is the next downside target on Europe. But I expect this to keep on moving lower. If you use the Fibonacci to try and get the next target on this one, the next immediate target, yeah, 119.3 is the next immediate target. So probably 60 pips lower, we still have a move that can be profitable. On the four hour chart, have my levels marked well. And the markets have been really respecting my level. So yeah, we had this consolidation, a break upward, a move lower, a break beyond P. Currently, S1 acting as a good level, and we are likely to get this move to S3. So if I was executing, if I was to execute this trade, I'd come in at this point. Stops would come in above that level. <coughs> if I was to execute this trade, what's my risk reward tool for short? Yeah. So if I was to execute this trade, I'd come in at this point. I'd look for S3 and my stops would come above would come above that point so that not a bad but risk reward ratio one is to three so you can execute that trade make money off this move lower all the way to 119.3 which i think is a profitable trade so to learn more on how to do the chart breakdowns like i've shown you you can decide to purchase one of our course packages in our course packages we take you through the whole process and procedure that we use to arrive at a trade decision we show you how we manage risk, we show you how we manage our psychology, how we generate trade ideas, how we analyze the markets, and how we even decide not to trade at times. Hey guys, so I'll pick up from Ken, and today as usual I'll cover Australian dollar and USD card. And just as Ken has said, the coronavirus has really affected the global economy and Australia has not been left out. 
beginning the year, we saw Australia really being affected by the bushfires, and now they're also being affected by the coronavirus. Not that the coronavirus has gone to Australia, but Australia really depends on China due to the trade they have with one another. On the other side, when I cover USD card, as we know, USD card is a commodity currency. It depends on oil. And oil has been affected by the coronavirus as China is one of the biggest importers of oil. And we've seen the oil drop since, as Ken has said, more than 10% during the month of January. And now it's still continuing that drop. So now we'll cover USD card and Australian dollar and see how it's playing in the market. So yes guys, now we are down to Australian dollar weekly chart. And as you can see, we have been on that downward movement. I would cover the whole big picture as we did last week because I'll just be repeating myself. So just doing a follow up and seeing what has happened. We can see uh, the whole of last week we had this sort of, because uh, it was just this one candlestick, sort of uh, a gravestone doji formation, which is a really, really important formation, especially at bottoms. And this uh, point where we are right now, the level where we are, which the market was found a flaw, is really important because if you break below this level, we're going to lows which we've not visited since 2009 after the financial crisis so market is really respecting that floor level and now we are seeing it bouncing off if you go down to the daily chart just to look at it closer we can see market has respected our elliotive pattern and we formed that one two three four five we covered last week beginning of last week we were just at the uh, wave three formation at the end of wave three so the whole of last week we saw it follow the wave four formation and before the close of the week we had that close down there um, which market closed below the opening of last week's open and this week market has found flow and we haven't had any movement to the downside as we are having a lot of indecisive decision if market will go to new decade lows or will still maintain above the level of 0 0.6650 so if we go down to the 4 hour chart following the Elliott wave analysis as we've seen we can see we formed sort of a double bottom over here but we've not finished the formation of our Elliott wave our channel analysis the one two three four five as you can see there in the chart we still have that formation still ongoing so there's still more room for the market to drop further down and if I show you with an arrow we still have that potential to go further down especially after we hear what Powell uh, Fed Powell has to say in front of Congress later on this week. We'll see how market will react to his news as he'll talk about the global economy and how it's affecting the U.S. market. So apart from that, that's what we're watching right now. Um, if market finds a base at this level, we'll see the market push further up. But there's still a lot of room because the Australian economy is really trying to uh, impose certain rules and certain monetary policies which can stimulate the um, uh, economy to come back into revival and the US economy is doing really great so you can see the US dollar going into further uh, highs the US dollar as the Australian dollar loses against it so I don't have much technically to say that's all I have mixing my fundamental analysis together with technical analysis that is what I'm watching right now we are seeing um, uh, the interest rates in Australia has not been this low for a really long time so we're in a different uh, shift this time round, and we're just yet to see what will happen in the market. So that's all I have for Australian dollar. I'll cover up more on the website. And for our students at Financial Hub, I'll do a better analysis for you and cover more in-depth on what is going to happen to this pair. So apart from that, let's look at USD card. So yes, guys, now we're down to USD card. And following up last week of what we had, we saw the whole of last week, we had that bullish, nice momentum to the upside. And this is the weekly chart. So just showing on a bigger time frame, time frame you can see market has been having, a, uh, since back in uh, 2017, market has been having that uptrend. And ever since we topped at uh, December 2018, we've been within this consolidation uh, level, within a triangle. And if I plot that using a little of analysis, we can have that beautiful A, B, C, D, E formation in respect with our Fibonacci level 78.6. So that was a beautiful uh, uh, pattern, uh, pattern formation. And if you go down to the daily chart, just look at it more closely, what we can get is a better clear analysis of that same triangle of plotting. So that one, two, three, four, five. Um, Elliott wave uh, pattern and as I covered last week what you can see happening over here currently I'm on a short 
uh, uh, position and what we can see is market can respect within here um, within that bounce within that level before we can have that further shoot to the upside uh, momentum but apart from that I was covering today earlier on with my colleague here at financial hub and looking at what can happen is that at this level 1.30 we can see previously market has really really been bouncing off this level and if we plot that using our triangle our rectangle i mean covering that we can see at this level once market usually reaches this level we get that bounce bouncing off this level market it's not really gaining direction of which side to go so we had that first time we had the second time and we had another third time so the same thing might happen over here again um if I zoom in, we might, we might see the market bouncing off this level over here and just having that sideways movement before we get any direction of which side we are meant to go. But if the market gets that strength to move to the downside, and as I said, I'm currently short and that's my short position, I had a really bad entry, I won't lie. Uh, I entered yesterday after uh, following my earlier two analysis, but uh, later on today, as, anal as I was analyzing the market in the morning, I didn't uh, watch completely to see the uh, completion of the, of the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 channel wave formation. And currently, the market, if we're able to break below this trend line, as you can see over there, um, the market might catapult all the way down uh, to our other trend line down here, seeing the bigger time frame. We might have that in line with our target, our usual target, according to Elliott Wave Analysis, the base of the beginning of this previous channel and that's what you might get so we are having sort of that uh, we're fighting in between the two of whether the market will be in a consolidation or will have that further move down so currently that's what i'm watching if the market gains momentum to the upside i will update you on the financial hub website but anything that's what i'm watching right now if anything comes up i'll let you guys know so currently uh, zooming in that's what we're getting so just following that formation, if the market bounces off this level, uh, we'll shoot all the way up to my stop loss and maybe move up further up. But I'm really, really on, uh, uh, my opinion is really based on the downward movement. So just do your own analysis, understand where the market is going on your own. Uh, and we'll cover up this later on in the week and next week we'll do a follow up on the pen. So that's basically what I have guys and that's uh, what Ken and I have seen in the markets this week. So we'll be doing a follow up as you know as usual on our website our students now the students we have here at financial hub will be doing those follow-up almost every day and analyzing the markets and seeing what is happening in the markets on a daily basis so um we'll do a follow-up next week as you know uh, we are now here in town our ica building offices so be free uh, you can contact us book a meeting come and see us come and see the packages we offer here at financial hub and if you're interested you can take a course or two so that's basically what i have for this week and we'll see you guys next week Thank you.